Kearney Caveman Bitch. Kearney Caveman Bitch. Kearney Caveman Bitch. Was Vegetable Police ever actually on the carnivore diet? Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But when I reached out to him with advice from my seven years of experience being chiseled out of marble on the carnivore diet, he ignored it and went back to being a vegan. And I find this a little bit insulting considering every single thing I told him he was suffering from hit the nail on the head. His health issues and symptoms correlated directly uh, to a histamine intolerance and vitamin D3 deficiency. He recently made a video, Five Signs Your Keto Diet Is Killing You, which is full of nonsense and really emphasizes that the advice I told him was correct. I feel kind of bad because all of his viewers are hating on him as well, uh, telling him to go on a French mustard diet, uh, saying that hopefully no one takes him seriously, and the video has an awful lot of dislikes. He started off with the caveman argument, belittling their intelligence, saying that they were just trying to survive, which is true to some degree, but then he tries to dismiss fasting on the basis that it was something that humans would have done unintentionally in periods of famine. But in our modern world, there are many health benefits to fasting, uh, mainly because of how unhealthy our lifestyles are now and just about every single person that has fasted especially coming from a standard american diet has seen drastic health improvements intermittent fasting eating one meal a day or eating during a select period of the day is far closer to our natural appetite and better for us than sucking down six vegan slop smoothies every day our small intestine extracts massive amounts of nutrients from animal foods so it takes longer than plants and eating larger animal food based meals once a day is ideal for many if not most people and far better for our health from any standpoint if you actually understand it plant foods are not easier to digest than animal foods a vegan diet is not easier on your gut than a carnivore diet the plant foods are simply moving through our digestive systems quicker because they don't contain the nutrition that animal foods do. The vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids. These plant foods only contain caloric macronutrient energy in the form of carbohydrates or types of sugars. He then goes on to say that sugar is the main source of energy for humans and what we are meant to run on. Is that why babies are born in ketosis? Is that why we can convert protein and fats into fuel for our body? The reality is that humans, even as cavemen, were far more adept hunters than any other human being on this planet. And in the recent thousands of years, with our higher intelligence levels and communities and tribes, we were able to procure calories ahead of time through animal husbandry and food storage. Uh, you know, the First Nation Alaskans would literally bury whole caribou in the frozen ground. Uh, you had the Native Americans drying out beef and rendering tallow. There are many indigenous food preparations that indicate storage uh, for long-term uses. As I am someone that understands how our hunter-gatherer ancestors lived, how these groups of indigenous tribes thrived in every single environment, it's a little bit irritating uh, for him to say these people were, you know, kind of struggling because they knew far more about human health than we do now in a natural setting. They knew the thousands of animals and plant foods in their environment, which ones were the healthiest, and they even had understanding of things like grounding, being in contact with the earth. Uh, there was a story from a documentary where this man walked into a teepee, one of the Native American tents, and the woman told him uh, to take his shoes off because they will make him sick. Uh, so these people had a very objective and in-depth understanding of every aspect of their environment when now, you know, especially in America, we're just walking through our lives in a mental fog 
not thinking for ourselves. Our ancestral diet should by no means be accepted without scrutiny, but it is the only basis for what humans are supposed to eat, especially considering that all of these indigenous groups were free from modern disease. There was no presence of degenerative disease as observed by Weston Price, who was a dentist that went around in the early 1900s studying these indigenous groups. You know, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer did not exist. So just on that, we can explore this further. It makes a lot of sense. When we look at the ancestral diet from a scientific standpoint, we understand that on paper, animal foods have all of the nutrients your body needs in the most bioavailable form. From a logical standpoint, it becomes clear that in any climate at any time of the year, the only food that can sustain the human brain size calorically would be from animals. Other animals have adaptations, whether it's large amounts of muscle or different digestive systems. Humans have intelligence, tools, the ability to procure high quality animal-based nutrition. And we know that these lifestyle diseases are caused by vegetable seed oils primarily, high linoleic omega-6 fatty acid consumption, as well as refined carbohydrates and sugar. Any natural food is not to be blamed, whether it's a chunk out of a bison or a wild plant food. And yeah, we do have animal foods now that are unhealthy because of how we're raising the animals and how we're processing the product. Vegetable Police seems fixated on his liver, saying that the fat on the carnivore diet is causing him to break out, impair his liver function, also mentioning that avocado caused him to break out. So it's not specific to animal foods. This is two things, a histamine intolerance as well as leaky gut. Uh, these foods can be very high in histamines and saturated fat is difficult to digest, something that should be eliminated or minimized initially when trying to fix underlying gut issues. Saying that the carnivore diet is bad for your liver and then going vegan and sucking down fructose and glucose all day is a little bit hypocritical as that sugar consumption is the primary cause of fatty liver disease. It's comical. In studies in rats, they literally use fructose to induce fatty liver disease. And in the presence of animal fats, they don't get fatty liver disease. But when you add vegetable oils and plant fats, the rats end up getting liver disease. Overall, I would speculate that he was just switching back and forth between carnivore and vegan on a weekly, if not daily basis, combining sugar and fat, which will certainly cause dysbiosis, gut bacterial imbalance, especially since he has colitis. He starts talking about carnivore calm, claiming that people following a carnivore diet are apathetic and that it's a bad thing. This is crazy as anyone who has lived in a standard American household probably has a few people in their family who act bipolar like complete goddamn nut jobs solely because of their diet. Literally cannot function until they get their morning sugar and coffee injection. But hey, that's a good thing because we need to sell the vegan diet. I really think Vegetable Police is stepping out of line saying that carnivores are apathetic. You know, you have Michaela Peterson who takes care of her lovely daughter. You know, Sean Baker is a loving father. And, you know, I help take care of my mentally disabled sister. So to label carnivores as, uh, you know, apathetic, you know, for whatever reason, whatever motives he has behind making this video, you know, it doesn't sit well with me. What I think was actually happening with him is that his histamine intolerance was causing some degree of brain fog, uh, resulting in him not caring or focusing on things he used to do. Uh, he then says that the body is running on adrenaline when you're on the carnivore diet, but no, you're on a ketogenic metabolism using the proteins and the fats that you consume for energy. Uh, moving on to electrolytes, he says that your adrenals are weakened and can't produce aldosterone in the absence of insulin. But wait, I thought you were running on adrenaline, yet your adrenals aren't working. There's two issues with this outside of the contradiction. One is that 
consuming protein and fat releases insulin. So your body does have insulin on the carnivore diet or ketogenic diet. Two is that coffee can stress the adrenals and we know how many people on the carnivore diet love coffee. It's definitely worth mentioning that histamine intolerance causes excess thirst. You know, Vegetable Police was complaining about his thirst on the carnivore diet, his electrolytes. I've never supplemented electrolytes and I don't think there is a need for them. But as someone who has had problems with histamines in the past, you get really thirsty and dehydrated uh, because your body is trying to clear the histamines out of the brain and it needs water consistently to do that. Uh, so if he goes from carnivore with a histamine intolerance to a vegan diet, he would probably feel better. Then he goes on to say that meat is dry and not hydrating like certain fruits because the meat is dry aged. But the water loss from the initial hanging of the carcass is insignificant, especially compared to a truly dry aged steak. Uh, next up is keto breath, which is probably not as bad as keto crotch. Keto breath, from my observation, is temporary uh, because ketone levels can be very high when you start a ketogenic diet. And ketone levels can also be very high uh, when someone is heavily overweight and still consuming a large amount of fats. Uh, while in a ketogenic metabolism. And, you know, a lot of people that go keto are pretty overweight. Uh, I never had keto breath. Uh, leaner people tend to not get keto breath. So in the context of an improperly done ketogenic or carnivore diet, uh, basically a diet followed without an emphasis on high quality animal foods, vegetable police is right to some degree. There are many people that can tolerate this type of diet with poor quality meats, but there are also plenty of people who cannot, vegetable police being one of them. According to him, every organ and gland in your body gets weakened by the ketogenic or carnivore diet. Yet our ancestors literally used to consume the organs of animals to promote the health of the corresponding body part. You know, they had beliefs that if you ate the brain of an animal, it would get you smarter. And it makes sense because brain is very high in omega-3 fatty acids. They believe that if you ate, you know, the liver or the eyes, that it would improve your eyesight. And it's true because there's retinol in liver. You know, this dumb caveman named Guilt apparently knew more about nutrition than vegetable police. The main reason I'm talking about this is because I just spoke about histamine yesterday. And I can't seem to understand why Vegetable Police is ignoring my advice, anyone else's advice. There's two hypothetical scenarios. One is that he really is this ignorant and doesn't do his research, or there is some special interest at play here. It could also just be a matter of so many people giving him crappy advice that he ignores the good advice. But who knows, you know, hopefully a little bit of tough love uh, will put him in his place because, you know, being nice and, you know, trying to collaborate with him uh, doesn't seem to be working. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further and don't have access to local food, uh, you can check out Frankie's Free Range Meat. We provide you guys with high quality nutrient dense animal foods at the most affordable price. Sale ends Saturday. Discount on a bunch of products. Check it out, guys. Also have frankiesnaturals.com. So if you want to look like a statue on the outside, go to frankiesnaturals.com. Check out our minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. If you guys do want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one health consultations, shoot me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com. Thanks again, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I will be streaming World of Warcraft Classic, most likely wasting my time, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash Frankie Tefano, for you nerds out there.